All right. So let's get started with the do now for today. There it is. So today is five, seven. All right, put your name on the do now, put your class period and look at this image closely. So we're talking about our animal hybrid project. I'm gonna do a demonstration today and then um, post a video to help anybody who misses the call um, after today. Um, and you'll be working on your animal hybrid um, next week to turn in on Friday next week, okay? So let's look closely at these two animals that are mixed together. Hopefully you can recognize what animals they are. So what two animals do you think have been mixed? And then look really closely at the image and describe two ways that the animals have been blended together. So look closely and describe two ways the animals have been blended together. I'll just mention a few things that I see here. I see a tongue coming out and I also see some antenna. So if you didn't catch that, All right, and once you answer those two questions, make sure you come back to Google Classroom and hit the turn in button right here. So make sure you hit the turn in button for today's do now. All right, so I'm going to walk you through um, the animal hybrid project will do, we'll mix two animals together um, during this demonstration. Some of the tools we'll focus on, I'll show you clone stamp, spot healing tool, blur, smudge. Um, also, uh, I talked to somebody earlier who wanted to see uh, dodge and burn because those can make things darker or lighter. So I'll show you how to do all of that. If you have not looked at our presentation, kind of discussing what our project is, the Prezi here, I'm going to click on this. And hopefully we can get it to load. All right, so these are our standards that we're looking at. So being able to use different approaches and being able to understand how um, you know imagery has changed. You need to be able to edit. Um, an animal hybrid. So we'll talk about what is a hybrid. So like either it's two plants that have been mixed together or like two different species. So like if you didn't know, like a um, mule is a mix between a donkey and a horse, but we're making, we're using our imagination and making crazy hybrids, okay? We'll talk about the clone stamp tool. I'll show you how to use that. There's a video here that also shows you spot healing brush and I think uh, the healing tool as well. I'm gonna skip through that. You can watch it on your own. And then um, as far as the project requirements, you need to be able to successfully merge two different animals with a convincing background. So the background has to make sense. So usually it's better to choose one image that's really good with a strong background and then edit the other one to kind of get it to work with your original picture. So I have tons of visuals here that we'll look at. And something I want to note, uh, note to you guys is that if they have a similar color, it's easier to do the blending. So these are all animals mixed together. I think they're funny to look at for us, right? But you can see like this eagle has the white right up here and the horse is white. So it's easier to blend the two together. Some of them are a little bit um, easier to blend. Like you could see how this guinea pig has like a real fuzzy 
face and that makes sense for the mane. This is super tricky. So to create all of these skin tones and have it be for a cat, this is next level. If you can do something like this, you're amazing. <laughs> but I think at this level, you know, any sort of merging that we can make happen so that they look like they blend together. And again, color makes a difference. So if you have similar colors, that makes it a little bit easier. Tons of different pictures for reference. And what we're trying to do is make it convincing. I think this one was a great one. <laughs> trying to make it convincing so they blend together. All right, let's 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 start, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is find some pictures of some animals. Now I could do a Google search, just type in animals. I don't know what animal I wanna do, so maybe I just wanna look at some pictures. Remember when you're looking at pictures that you wanna choose the biggest pictures possible. Because if you have a really small size, the picture when you stretch it or make it larger will get blurry. So go up to tools and size and make sure it's large. Now you can start to kind of look at these pictures and decide what do you like and what do you not like. So I could totally see this red panda face, which is by the way, my favorite animal, put on a tiger, right? They have some similar colors. I could see all I would have to do is angle this face a little bit different. Maybe I could put this fennec fox right here on this sheep. See how they would work together? So I could just kind of look at the pictures that I see here as options. What I like to do, and we ran into some problems with this because not everybody's computer has access to this, but what I like to do is go to a stock photography site. Because stock photography is basically pictures that are made by people who are professional photographers and you can choose from those and they're better quality. They're usually a bigger resolution. Um, you just have more interesting things to choose from. Okay. So um, there's lots of different ones that you can go to, but one that I really like is Getty. It's a really big one. Now, somebody who was on a Chromebook today couldn't access this site. Don't worry, you can always Google your photos. It doesn't have to be through this site. But I just like this one because it has some really good quality images. So I'm gonna look up animals. I looked it up earlier when I was doing a demonstration. And I'm just gonna look at their pictures. Just look what's available. And you can see they have a ton of different pictures. that I could choose from, that I could work with. And again, they're better quality pictures. And I wanna make sure you don't have the same animal. Like I don't wanna put this dog face on something that, that's a dog, a different kind of dog. You know what I mean? Like I want it to be like very different. And there's a hundred more pages to choose from, okay? So I'm just gonna choose two from this page. Let me just scroll through and see what I got. All right, I'm gonna go with these two right here. All right, so I'm gonna right click on the image and I'm gonna copy it. And I'm gonna come over to Photopea and let's open up Photopea. I'm gonna make a new project. So I'm gonna hit new project in the middle. And I'm gonna call this my animal hybrid. I'm gonna say number two because I did this one earlier so I wanna make sure it's a different one. I did the one for um, last period. All right, so what do I know about the size? I'm gonna start with just the size of a piece of paper, which is eight and a half by 11, but I gotta look at my pictures because my picture, the way my picture is oriented might change the way my size is um, for my project. So for instance, like this picture right here might be more like a better suited to be taller and crop out some of that background but this picture is definitely wider. So it kind of depends on the picture. So if, like if I was doing a Google search and I was looking up pictures, so let's just do that real quick. So if I did a Google search 
and I typed in animals or animal. I just went to images and I went to what was available. So this picture is definitely, it needs to be a wider one. So I might have it 11 inches long and 8.5 tall. But this one, I might want to have 11 inches tall and 8.5 wide. So it depends on your picture. If it's landscape or portrait that you're starting with, because if you don't match it kind of up to what your picture is, then you end up having to stretch it too much and it, it's, it's a whole big thing. So look at your picture first and decide if you need it to be taller or if you need it to be wider. So this one needs to be wider, this one needs to be taller. It's just the orientation of the picture. So my pictures that I'm choosing from are these two right here and both of them are wider. So I'm gonna put my size in as 11 inches wide and my height is 8.5. And we're still looking at the size of a piece of paper. We wanna make sure it's inches. It's just whether or not you have it going lengthwise, like landscape or portrait mode, okay? So it depends on what your picture is. So I'm making it wider and I'm gonna hit create. All right, let's bring in my first picture. So I think I had already copied it. I'm gonna do it again just in case. So I right click and copy image. I'm gonna come over here, edit and paste. Not bad, it's a little small, so let me bring it in a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go to either free transform or transform and scale, so all of these options are available. I'm gonna do free transform. I'm gonna hold down shift, so hold on the shift key. Remember, I wanna make it bigger, but I don't wanna stretch it weirdly, so I wanna make sure I hold down the shift key. That's pretty good, I'm gonna make it just a touch bigger. Okay, so there's my background picture. Now, I'm going to bring over this little guy, and I'm going to put his face on top of this face of the seal, okay? So I'm going to right-click and copy this image. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to do edit and paste. Okay, there's my dog. Now, I need to get rid of this white background, right? Because I don't need the white background. So let me go through different options for selecting the background, okay? Or just selecting in general so you're aware of them. So the first option that we've used before is Magic Wand. Magic Wand works well because it's only selecting one color. So if we had a background that's just one color, this is perfect for it. We have mostly the same colors, a little bit of shadow here, but I think this might work for this one. So let's go and start to click. And it's selecting most everything pretty well, actually. So I'm holding down shift to select more than one area at a time, right? So I'm holding down the shift key. And I'm just trying to select all of these little areas over here and get it as close to the dog as possible. So I'm going to kind of come in here, come closer to the fur on the ears. Just trying to get as tight of a selection as possible. So in this case, I'm choosing the background and it's pretty easy to choose. And then all I have to do is hit backspace or delete and it's gone. And I have my just my dog's face. But let me show you how some other selection tools work so in case that one doesn't work for you, because again, every picture is different. So I'm gonna go up and deselect. Now we know the lasso tool, we can just freehand choose the lasso tool. So I can like freehand, go around my dog, try my best to get as close as I can. But this could take me a long time and it may not be the best choice, just because like time-wise, I mean, it's okay. Right, I did that like two seconds. You could obviously take your time and do a little bit better. In this case, I chose the dog and I would have to go up to so select and inverse to delete my background, to hit backspace and delete my background, okay? But I'm gonna take a step back. Let's look at another one. Another option is what's called the polygonal lasso tool. And this one's really good if I had something that maybe wasn't as furry like if I had sharp edges, I can click 
and kind of follow the shape, but you see it's really mostly straight lines. So every time I click from one point to the next, I'm telling it what to select. So this one is not ideal for this situation, but maybe it may work well for you. So I'm just gonna do just a quick selection, just so you can see. And you can see where I'm clicking, and how often I'm clicking. Again, not the best one for a furry animal, but it's an option. And again, my dog is selected, so in order to get rid of the background, I would have to go up to select, inverse, and then hit backspace or delete, okay? Let's go back. And I'm gonna show you one more. This one is called magnetic. So what the computer is gonna to try to do with this one is it's gonna to try to select as close to the outline that you're trying to draw around and just look for the pixels that are similar. So it is trying to do its best and I'm clicking and holding this whole time to select all of the parts that it can. So it missed a little bit on that ear there. But overall, oh, got missed some of the head. We'll have to go back. It's okay. I'm going to record it. So. so with this one, you can see it's not the best, but I can edit it by going to lasso and then using either shift or alt to add or take away. So if I hold down the shift key, I can add this area in. And if I hold down the alt key next to the space bar, uh, space bar, I can take this area away. So hold down the shift key. I can add to my selection. Hold down the alt key. I can take away from my selection. Okay, so all of these are options when selecting. And I think the, the difference in a good quality finish like project is that you took your time to make sure your selection was strong. This one, I don't think it's the best. I'm gonna go back to my magic wand because I think that was the closest to my dog that I could get. So I'm gonna come back through, select all of my background. Get as close as possible. To my dog without some of these extra areas. And you can always zoom in to get a closer view. So I'm just trying to follow as close as I can to my dog. Looking at my details. I think that's pretty good. Let's hit delete. All right. Now, what I've noticed with a few people is they forget to deselect. So if I go to choose another tool over here to use it, and I still have my selection like already up here on the screen with the dots around it, then what I'm telling the computer is whatever tool I choose, I only want to use it on that selected area, and that's not the case. So make sure after you're done with your selection that you go back up to the top and you hit deselect. Okay. Now I'm going to go over to my move tool, and let's move this dog's face. Let's kind of position it where I want it. Kind of roughly there. I'm going to go to my free transform and I'm going to try to rotate it a little bit. But I'm like, how can I really see if I'm on where I want to be? If I come over here to my opacity, I can drop it and kind of see where my dog's eyes and where the seal's eyes are. And I can come back over and I can move it so that I'm closer. Let me go in and rotate it a little bit more. So I'm trying to get my dog's eyes closely lined up with the seal's eyes. I could even if I wanted to um, flip my image. 
So if I wanted to do something like that to kind of get it positioned better, it's looking pretty funny. And what I like about the free transform is if I want to then resize it, I can. If I want to rotate it, I can. All right, let me turn the opacity all the way back up again. All right, so there's my dog, and it, I can see it's pretty close to the eyes, eyes of my seal. Not bad. I think I'll move it over just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to do some blending here because this is very clear. Like, this neck here does not fit with the neck of my seal. So one of the things that I found is the easiest is to use the eraser tool. And whenever I click on a tool over here, you'll notice the control panel up at the top changes, right? Based on whatever tool I have selected. So if I'm on um, any of these tools over here, you'll see how this changes. I'm gonna click on my eraser tool and I'm gonna come up to this control panel and I'm gonna drop the opacity down. I'm gonna bring it really low because I only wanna take a little bit out at a time and then I can always come back and take more out. So I'm gonna take it like all the way to like 20. And I'm gonna change my brush size for my eraser. And if I use something like this one, it's a really hard edge, so it'll be really clear, like if I mess up, but I wanna have something really fuzzy like this. So I'm choosing this soft one here, but I'm gonna make the size a lot bigger. Let me like that. Let's try this one. All right, I think that's good. All right, let's come over here. All right, so I want to make sure I'm on my dog layer because what I'm trying to do is uh, erase like the neck of my dog so that it blends in with my seal. So I'm going to come in. I'm just going to do it a little bit at a time and just slowly kind of see how it looks. I don't want to do anything drastic. And because this is a soft brush, it's not going to show a hard edge. I think I want to get rid of the collar because the collar really doesn't make sense here. So I'm going to come up and just delete some of this collar. It's already starting to look pretty good, I think. Now, something I notice is around the outside edge of my ears, I have like a different kind of light source. So I'm going to go in and adjust around my ear. So I'm going to soften my ears with the eraser a little bit, but I'm going to do a lot smaller because this is going to be way too big. Let's try something like that. All right. And I'm just going to soften around the outside edges of my ears so that it, I'm erasing just a little bit of it so that it blends into the background a little bit better because I don't want any sort of harsh lines to stand out too much. So I'm just softening this, erasing it just a little bit so that it blends in with my background. And you can see if I see a harsh line, I go back over and just do it a couple times. Like right here, see how that's like choppy? Let me zoom in so you can see it. See how that's like choppy right there? I'm gonna come back with this tool and just kind of soften it a little bit. Just so it's not so noticeable. And again, all this is is a low, lower opacity eraser. And you got to keep it low, though. If I come in like harsh with like a really high, it'll just like swipe the whole area out. I don't want to do that. And I think while I'm here, I notice a little bit over here that I want to soften just a touch more. All right, let me zoom back out. I'll hold the Alt key. So when I'm looking at this, it's not too bad. Actually, I think, think it kind of works, but the colors are very different. So I'm going to try to merge these colors together so they make sense. So I'm making sure that I'm selected on my dog layer here. I'm going to go up to image and adjustments and see all of the things that you can play around with on this layer with the adjustments. So again, I'm under image and adjustments and I could adjust how light or dark it is. I could adjust the colors, make it black and white. 
posterize it. I'm going to play around with hue and saturation because I'm going to try to change these colors so that they match my seal. So this is kind of like a bluish gray. So let's see. <laughs> this dog looks like sick. That's not bad there. Let me go the other way. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, that's getting closer right there. Saturated is how much color is in it, so I can go crazy with the color. That is obviously way too much, but let me drop the color down. And that is very much looking close to the seal. So I'm just kind of playing around with it to see like what works with it. Visually, like, does it need to be more blue? Does it need to be less blue? That's what the saturation is. And I can make it lighter or darker. I'm gonna go just a little bit darker, I think. Yeah, that, that fits pretty well. I, I think that's a good match. The colors are pretty close. Let me show you some other tools though that you could use to help you with this. So there's the spot healing brush and the healing brush that you can practice with, trying those out. Another one that I was talking with um, students today, they were using the clone tool and it worked really well for them. So the clone tool is over here on the side, looks like a little stamp. Um, it may be underneath your brush tool. So it depends on, you have to kind of like click and hold to see if you can find it, right? For me, it's right here, it's out in the open. And for the clone tool, what it does is it chooses from the area um, that I wanna select from and I can brush with that same area. So it's hard to describe. I guess let me just show you. So if I'm on the dog layer, so I'm on the dog layer right here, and say I wanna add some fur down here to my seal. I take some fur from on the ear here and basically copy it and draw it on here. So I might take some from over here. Let's try this first. So I'm gonna hold on the Alt key and a little plus shows up. And I think I might do something bigger because that's a very small selection. Choose something softer. That's better. So I chose a softer one. Look at the difference between a hard edge and a soft edge. Okay, so make sure you choose a softer one. And I'm going to go a little bit bigger with it. That's good. And it's showing me already what it would look like. All right. So I'm going to come over here. And I don't want to do that one. I'm going to come down towards the body here. And bring a little fur in. I'm going to choose from over on this side. Ooh, I don't want the eye. So I could add a little fur on my body if I wanted to. And I can kind of draw around right, to kind of blend that in. I could do some selective like erasing around the outside. So I could come back over here, come to my eraser tool, make sure the opacity is low and just kind of fade some of this in. So if I wanted to bring fur somewhere or feathers or copy an area, that's how I could do it with the clone tool. Okay, so I select an area. Now somebody was on a Chromebook earlier and he could not do it by holding down the Alt key. He had to hold down the letter K, which is the first time I had seen that. So you may have that as an option. It may just pop up and tell you, hold down Alt or letter K. So in order to select an area, you can hold down the Alt key or the letter K. Right, so I can just bring it down to another space if I want to. All right, now, I mean, I'm not a big fan of this, but whatever, it's, it's, it's there, so I'll work with it. But I wanna show you some of the other tools that are over here. So there's a blur tool, and I'll show you the blur tool on the seal layer. So it looks like a little water drop off to the side here. I'll make a bigger size of it. And a blur tool, let me show you. I'm gonna blur this area of the nose. See what happened? So if I need to fade one thing into another thing, maybe the blur tool could help me do that. So the difference between blur and not blur. 
So if I'm on my dog, dog slash seal, I could blur out some of this fur, right? Or I could keep the texture with less blur. It's really your call, okay? Another option is the smudge tool. Now the smudge tool is really dramatic. You got to be careful with it and make sure that you adjust like the strength of it. You don't want to push too much. But let me show you the smudge tool on the seal. So you can see if I'm trying to smudge on my seal, how much it can like pull. But I could blend with it if I wanted to. So that's the smudge tool. Another tool that I was talking about with students who were working um, is the dodge and the burn tool. So these two right here. So dodge means to lighten it. So let me show you what the dodge tool does. That's the dodge tool. And then the burn tool does the opposite. It darkens it. So I'm going to go in here. So say I had a shadow in one picture that I was trying to blend in another picture into, I could come in with the dodge tool or the burn tool, I mean, and then darken that area. Okay, so like in the middle of this where the fur is, maybe I want to lighten it on this side. So I'll go over here and I'll go to my dodge tool and I want to lighten it a little bit over here because that kind of fits in with my seal in the background but maybe I want to darken it even more on this side. So I could come over with my burn tool and darken it over here. I could also darken my original image if I wanted to. So if I wanted to kind of get something to fade in, I'm just clicking on my seal layer and I could get to fade some areas in if I wanted to. Okay. So these are all different tools that you can use. So the different selection tools are all up here that you're welcome to choose. Right? We looked at the spot healing brush, the healing brush, the clone tool. Clone tool is especially helpful with this one if you want to copy an area, right? We used the eraser and we dropped the opacity down. So if we wanted to erase something, we weren't erasing a really harsh line. We made sure to choose a softer brush, not something hard like this. Choose a softer one that's kind of fuzzy around the outside, and then you can adjust it, and you can delete some areas without being too harsh. The other thing we looked at was the blur tool to blur out a space, the smudge tool to blend one into another, kind of, it's, it looks like a finger pushing paint, right? Kind of like you're smudging on a piece of paper. That's what it's just like but it'll take a lot of, uh, of the pixels and move them. So you gotta make sure you're committed to that. You might have to zoom in to really get it to do what you want. And then we have the dodge and the burn tool that we looked at as well. You could also try the sponge tool too, okay? Now let's go through like what you like the way it is. Now, if it was me, I'd probably fine tune this a little bit more, but it's, it's good enough. But when you're done, we have to go through the process of saving. So always do file, save as a PSD, It'll download to your computer before you do anything else, because I've seen this happen multiple times now. Go over to Google, open up your drive, make sure you're logged in as your school ID, open up your drive. Hit new and file upload and pull that project from your downloads. So it should show up right here. Here it is. And upload it into your Google Drive. That way, if you close down your computer, you don't lose your work. Okay? The second thing you need to do is file, export as a JPG. Remember, a JPEG is like taking a picture of the, of the project. It's not, it does not have layers on it. So it's a smaller file size, and that's what you can turn in. So you're going to come on here, you're going to hit save, it'll download, and this is what you'll turn in, okay? 
So now that you have a demonstration kind of using these different tools, seeing how to merge your two animals together, you want to make sure the background makes sense with both pictures. If you need to change the colors, you can change the colors, right? But you want to make an animal hybrid of two unexpected animals. So don't do like a bird on a different bird. Make sure they're two different, very different animals that you're blending together. Okay, and you have until next Friday to turn in this project. All right, I'm gonna come back over to you guys. Anybody have any questions about anything?